Hey you guys, I just had to jump on here tonight. Actually tonight is 11 years ago where the Lord heard my cry. I was literally um, strung out on drugs in addiction to meth, addiction to alcohol, addiction to cigarettes. I was literally bound in depression, about to actually put a needle in my arm for the first time tonight, 11 years ago. The Lord stooped down and got my attention. He's literally stooped down in the pits of darkness and saved my life. I've got to testify tonight. If you know anybody that is in depression and in fear, that is struggling right now, I'm going to tell you to tag them in this video. I'm here to testify of the goodness of the Lord. I'm here to testify that my God, the one who created me and you, is a deliverer. No matter what you've been through, God says, I have you. Just call on me. When you say Jesus, he is right there. When you say Jesus, I need you. He will come to your rescue and pull you out of any trial, out of any place of darkness. I'm here to tell you that God will deliver you from anything. Open your eyes and see the hand that is trying to grab you and rip you out of darkness, rip you out of depression, rip you out of suicide. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, your life is worth living. Can you say amen? Your life is worth living. I want you to tag somebody you know that is struggling tonight. I'm going to tell my story about the night God literally ripped me out of darkness. I said, God, I need you and he, he literally grabbed me and pulled me out of addiction, y'all. That night was the first night I was gonna take my addiction to another level. But God said no, no, because guess what? He knows, he knows how much. He knows how much we, that we could take. God says, I've got you, daughter. Son, I've got you. I'm right there. Just grab my hand. He will do anything. Let me just say this. Depression is a liar. Addiction is a liar. Everything the enemy tries to throw at you is a liar. Okay, you guys, God is here to set you free. The word says you overcome him. Him is Satan. You overcome Satan by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. And I'm here to testify of God goodness. I'm here to testify whether you have sickness in your body. God says, I'm going to heal you. I'm Jehovah Rapha. So if you've got sickness in your body, I want you to begin to prophesy over yourself and begin to declare life over your body in the mighty name of Jesus. Don't succumb to any lie of the enemy. Don't say, this is the end. I have, I've got no hope. My kids are running out of addiction. I have no hope. Um, my finances are looking crazy. God is here. He, he says, I have more for you that you shall not lack. You shall not lack. God is so good. Hey, Misty. Hey, Andrea. How are y'all doing tonight? I'm going to testify. Hey, Desi. Hey, my girl. Yes, four years ago, we were delivered from addiction. Praise God. If you're just jumping on, share um, with somebody. Let people know. I'm jumping on and I'm just testifying about what God has done in my life. I'm sharing my story and my journey of how the Lord delivered me in the darkest place of my life where literally I had no hope for life. I thought committing suicide was the only way out where you feel like your life is not worth living. You feel like that you can never be around people anymore, that you will always be this way, that addiction is, is your only choice. No one wakes up and says, oh yes, I just, I just want to do drugs today. I just want to smoke a cigarette today. I just want to be an adulteress. You know, people don't just wake up and say that. Stuff happens in people's lives to get you to that point. But let me just tell you, 11 years ago tonight, I cried out to the Lord and he answered me. I cried out to the Lord and I, I grabbed his hand and said, God, I need you. We have to be a part of our story. We have to be a part of our breakthrough. We have to be the one to say, God, I need you. And be willing to grab his hand, even if it's scary. I remember stepping out 
out of addiction and into an unknown place, okay? I was so bound in my mind. I was so bound in addiction. That's all at that point I knew I was broken. I was under 100 pounds and I was sick as a dog, okay? Smoking meth up for four days straight, you know, seeing things, all this crazy stuff happening. If you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. But if you, you've been there and then if you've been where God has delivered you, I want you to throw up some hearts. We want to testify of God God's goodness tonight. All right, so let's let let me back up 11 years ago. Okay, 11 years ago, I was literally sleeping from couch to couch to couch to couch. Okay, I, my, at one point, my car was being used for for drugs. Okay, I was I was using my body to to uh, get drugs. I was living in my drug dealer's house. I was literally strung out on meth. Okay, you guys, I was so dark in my addiction. I actually had a bed at home with my, my mom. My mom said, I want you to come home. I want you to be with us. You know, of course I didn't want to be with them because I thought I didn't want all my junk to rub up on them. I did not want to pollute, pollute them in, in that lifestyle. You just want to, you want to get away from everyone that loves you. And so that's where I was. I was so bound in depression. I was seeing things. I was the enemy was working on my mind saying, Krista, you know, no one would care if you would, if you would die, you know, just kill yourself, just kill yourself. That's where I was at. I had no worth. I had no self-worth. I had no point of living. Okay. And one night, okay, I'm sitting there waiting on drugs. Okay. And all of a sudden I get a phone call from an unknown caller. I'm like, Oh Lord, who's this? Is this my drug dealer? You know, cause if it's my drug dealer, I'm going to answer the phone. Well, anyway, I answered the phone, and like I said, that was the night that I was actually going to shoot up for the first time, okay? Um, and if anybody knows anything about drug addiction, that is the next level, okay? That is the next level that's come, that, is, that is deeper in addiction, okay? Um, but anyway, that night, I got a phone call from an old friend, okay? I answered the phone. He's like, I'm back in town. Do you want to go hang out? I'm like, yes, come pick me up, you know, whatever. So this guy comes pick me up. And he just got back from Team Challenge. And I'm like, okay. He starts talking about all this stuff. I'm like so high, just like not. Okay, that's great. He's like, you need to go. I'm like, absolutely not. Why would I need to go to rehab? I, I don't need that. Like, why do you think I need that? Okay, so that's where I was. We know I was in denial. I, you know, most people that are in addiction, we're in denial about our issues. We don't want to talk about it. Well, this is our lifestyle. This is what we're doing, you know. And um, anyway, so I'd be hanging out. And stuff like that and he's talking and talking and talking I'm like oh god what did I do what did I answer this phone call anyway so and then I got another phone call um, about a couple hours later um, my mom called me and says your sister is in labor with her first child okay so I have a twin sister okay no matter how far in my addiction that I went my sister was always there for me she was always there for me no matter what I did she was always there and you know those people when you've been in addiction and the people that would always answer the phone call, you know, even if you're crying and, and you don't, you never show up for family events, but they'll always answer the phone. She was that girl. You know, Krista, what do you need? How can I help you? I, I, I love you. I still love you, you know? And, and so when I heard, and she was my roommate, okay? That was my best friend. She was my roommate. And, and she was in labor for her first baby. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I've got to get there. I've got to get there. I can't, you know, I, I'm that person that, I mean, I would, I would duck, you know what I'm saying, and hide out in houses, but there was something pulling me there. Like I had to be there, you know? And so I had my grandmother, I says, hey, can, can you bring me to the hospital? I need, I, need, I need a ride. And so my grandmother comes pick me up. I didn't even care what I looked like. I got, I got to go there. I got to see if my sister's okay. So I go in there, y'all. I, I literally, I really don't even know what I said, but I was asked to leave by my family. I was cursing my brother-in-law out and all this stuff. And Kayla said, Kayla said, Krista, are you okay? Are you okay? And she's, she's breathing heavy. I said, I don't know, Kayla, but I think I may go to, I think I may go to Teen Challenge. At that point, I was like, okay, I, you know, I just, I think I need help. That was the first time, that was the first time I said that to any, anybody. I said, Kayla, I think I might. I might go to rehab, you know, and it's like, okay, why did I just say that? You know, I was saying I don't need it. Well, you know, anyway, so I, I got asked to leave. So I, I called somebody to pick me up. Okay. So I, I get that person to pick me up. Needless to say, I, I actually fell asleep that night, which was very rare. I didn't sleep that much in my addiction. Um, so I fell asleep that night and I woke up the next morning. And when I woke up the next morning, the, a picture of my nephew 
was on my phone. And all of a sudden, I begin to break. And in his eyes, I heard the father say, I've not abandoned you. I literally heard him say, I have not abandoned you, but I love you. And I was like, okay. And in that moment, the person that, that, um, that told me about Teen Challenge, I'm like, hey, I don't know how to get there. I need your help. Y'all listen, this is not the end of the story. Y'all listen to this. I, I need help. I don't, I don't know what to do, how to get there. I'm ready. I'm ready. I know I, I need to go. Okay, so this person, he's like, all right, so, you know, we need this, this, and this. You need to do all this. And then, so he helps me get, get, a, get the application. He helps me do all that kind of stuff. Okay, so about three days later, I call my, my mom and I say, listen, mom, I'm going to Teen Challenge. Can you help me? And at that point, like, I was, I neglected my family. Like, I didn't, I didn't want anything to do with them, you know? And so my mom came to pick me up and she helped me pack and all that. So listen to this, y'all, listen to this story. So while I was getting packed for Team Challenge, my mom came in the room. She says, Krista, I gotta talk to you about something. And um, she said, what you don't know is that um, the day before Kayla went into labor, uh, this prophetess, okay, if anybody know what a prophetess is, a prophetess speaks the word of the Lord. The day before Kayla went into labor, lay labor for her first child, this prophetess pointed to Kayla's belly and said, through the birth of Judah, Krista is coming back to God. Through the birth of Judah, Krista is coming back to God. While Kayla was in labor, God positioned this guy that I hadn't even seen in years. Call me and said, I just got back from Teen Challenge. You need to go. You can't make that up. Let me just say this. And, and the kicker is also, Kayla wasn't supposed to give birth to Judah for another 30 days. After that prophetic word went forth that I was coming back to God through the birth of Judah, mom said to God, I can't wait 30 days, God. My daughter's been out there for too long. God hears the cry of a mother. If you're a mother, if you're a grandmother, if you're a father, a friend, a sister, an aunt, an uncle, do not stop claiming your sons, your daughters, your nieces and nephews because God is hearing your, pro your cry. Do not give up on your loved ones and your friends. Continue to prophesy over them. Be continue to declare the word of the Lord over them because God is listening. And as you speak the word of the Lord and deliverance over there, over them, let me tell you, those demons are fleeing. God has a way out. God is listening to you. Don't stop interceding for them. Do not stop going to the throne of God for the ones you love. Don't get weary and we're uh, well-doing, daughter and son. God says, I am going to rescue them. Y'all, listen, this is real. This is so amazing. And in that moment, I was like, it was like another, another, um, another way the Lord said, I didn't leave you, daughter. You left me. I never abandoned you. I never abandoned you. You walked away from me. And in that moment, I felt this love come into my heart. And it like, it literally began to open up. When you've been away from the Father, when you don't know the love of the Father, the one who created you, your heart is stony, okay? And my heart was a stone, like a stone wall. I had no, I couldn't trust anyone. So at that point, I was smoking, I was smoking three packs of cigarettes a day, okay? And in Teen Challenge, I was going to this program and they didn't allow cigarettes. They didn't allow um, prescription drugs. They didn't allow anything. And so I was scared to death. I was scared to death, but I knew that, that I had to do it if I wanted to get my life back. Y'all, I was so, I was at the point where I was, I was considering suicide. I was in depression. I had panic attacks. I, I was, I was scared to death. Literally addiction and alcohol, uh, all this demonic stuff was literally 
just inside of me, in my mind. I didn't even know how or if I could even get free. I was just trying this thing out, okay? And so I went to Teen Challenge, and when I walked through the doors, I was literally scared to death. I was scared to death. Okay, I smoked my last cigarette on Deer Pin Road, and I'm like, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. 11 years, I haven't smoked one cigarette, you guys. God delivered me from that, and if you, are, if you if you are still addicted to nic nicotine, let me just tell you, God will give you the grace to walk this out. Lay it down and be, and walk with the Lord. Lay it down and get somebody that you can be accountable to. Okay, y'all, we've got to have our sisters and brothers in Christ to hold our hand as we walk out of places of addiction, out of places of, of depression, and out of places where you are grieving. You've got to have somebody to hold your hand as you walk this road. Okay, so I walk into this program, okay, and um, they do this big sister program, okay, where as you walk in, you have somebody helping you along the way, okay? After six months, you're, like, you're a big sister. So this girl, big blonde hair, big blue eyes, big mouth, comes in there, shining, she's been delivered and I'm like oh my god it's so bright like I was like who are you why are you even here you know you don't even look like you ever did a drug in your entire life God delivered this girl from heroin she was shooting up heroin um, like she was actually about to graduate so she was like 12 months 11 months in the program God delivered her okay she was my big sister and the Lord began to um, knit us together and she helped me out along the way but let me just tell you my experience there. So the first time I got there, I, I went to sleep, but I kept on waking up. These tormenting demons kept on just, I began to see demonic things. I was off of drugs. In broad daylight, I saw demons. I'm seriously, seriously, like these big skinny demons and these big little short, these short fat demons. And I'm like, oh my God, will I ever, I was so tormented. Okay, let me say this. I had already given my life to Jesus, okay? Because when you go to Teen Challenge, it's literally a place where they cultivate the presence of God and they they want you to know him because they know that's the only way to freedom, okay? But I had, so, so I had already given my life to Christ. So let me just say this. If you've given your life to Christ and you're just walking with the Lord and you say, why am I still tormented? Why, why am I still having all these issues? Guys, it's just begun. So when the blood of Jesus comes on your life, it begins to shake the foundation. It's only begin, daughter. All the things that have been deeply rooted in your foundation, your life, your foundation that your life was built on begins to shake, begins to become uprooted. This is the beginning. So don't think it's strange that you're dealing with all of this junk coming up. I'm telling you right now, this is where it begins. Don't run away, but say, God, help me. And if you don't have somebody walk this with you, connect with people that you know that can walk this road with you. I will walk this with you if you want me to, okay, you guys? Because this is something I know. This is, this is my territory. I've been here before. So I was, I was so tormented by these demons. And let me just tell you, everyone, all the women in my cabin that night was tormented by these demons because of of what was on me, okay? And so I just, I felt so bad, you know? And so let me just tell you what happened. We went to church that next day and I knew, I knew that that I could talk to the pastor. I After church, I said, listen, listen, pastor, I, I'm tormented, I have demons, I'm seeing them, I need you to pray for me, okay? And so this is the beginning of my literally uh, deliverance, okay? And so he laid his hands on me, okay? The power of the Holy Ghost, begin to shake me from the inside out. I literally felt those things come from the inside out of me. And he saw it in the spirit, these chains that were around my wrist begin to break off. He heard it hit the ground. When I walked away from that moment, I felt so much freedom. But let me just tell you, that wasn't the end. That was not the end of my deliverance. As I began to open up, I had such a hard, stony heart before the Lord. I was so broken. And I remember being like every morning in Teen Challenge, we would go to our mess hall, our dining room, and we would put on music to worship. And I would look around and I'm sitting there and all these, all these girls are worshiping Jesus. And I'm like, I don't even know what to do. I don't know how to get there. Y'all, I was raised in church. I was, I was this, I was a preacher's kid, but I was so far removed from that, you know? And and so I was like, God, I don't know what to do. So much shame and so much guilt. That's another thing. 
that happens. Whenever the presence of the Lord is present, the enemy wants to come and put shame and guilt on you. Y'all listen to me. This is a demonic lie of the enemy. The enemy will try to come whenever the presence of the Lord begins to come and, and do a work in you. Shame and guilt wants to tell you things to try to get you to run. Don't run. God, I give you the shame and guilt. It's a whole liar, guys. That is a whole liar to keep you stuck. And so I was sitting there. And, and so I, I ended up kneeling on the floor and saying, Father, I don't even know what to say to you. But God, if you're real, Save me. If you're real, <laughs> come in. And literally, wave by wave, I felt him overtake me. I had moments like this in Teen Challenge. And it's like he, every time that I met with him, it's like, it's like another piece of me was healed. Another thing that was attached to me would fall off. Y'all, and another thing, let me tell you this. This is so amazing. And the Lord will do this to you. He will speak to you through people. He will speak to you in, in a secret place. He will speak to you through scripture verse. As you're in your, in your time of recovery, as you're on your journey with the Lord, um, he will begin to speak to you. Y'all listen to this. Three months before I, get, I went to Teen Challenge, a woman, a, 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 a pastor named Boogie Bedgood from um, Goldana, Louisiana, y'all, country church, but the power of God moved here. She was a woman of God. And if you're on Boogie, I just want to say thank you for being obedient to what God spoke to you. Three months before I got to Teen Challenge, this woman of God came to minister there. She says, there's going to be a girl here. There's going to be a girl that comes. She is a preacher's daughter. She says, I don't, she said, I want you to love on her. She is broken. She is broken. And the Lord is going to bring healing to her life. She says, this is what she said. She says, as much as y'all need her, she, no, as much as you, as much as she needs y'all, y'all need her. And, and they, and let me just say this. I didn't know this. I, when I walked through the doors, and this is, an, let me back it up. When I walked through the doors, all these girls were staring at me, whispering, and I'm like, they don't like me. I'm ready to run. And, and I turned to my big sister and I said, why are they staring? Like, I already had horrible self-worth. Like I, when I looked in the mirror, I hated the girl that I saw. I was so ugly. I thought that I was the most ugliest person that I ever saw. And this girl said, Krista, what you don't understand is that the girls, the, this woman came and said that, that you were coming. We have been waiting for you and you're here. And so God was not only speaking to me, but showing the other women in my program who he was because I got there and I was everything that that woman said that I was. Y'all, this is how the father works. Y'all, he has got your number. He is wanting to step in on the scene in your life. It doesn't matter if you've been walking with the Lord 30 years. It doesn't matter if you've been walking with the Lord five months, two days. God says, I'm here. Come climb in my arms, daughter. I want to restore you. I want to b bring back your joy. I want to give you everything you need in this season. I've called you to flourish, not stay stuck in depression, not stay stuck in fear, not stay stuck in the lies the enemy says that you don't know what you're going to do next. God says, I got you. I need you, daughter. I need you, son, to come into my presence because that is where you will find everything you need. All right, another part of my journey I want to talk to you about. Teen Challenge is a whole year, you guys. And let me just tell you another thing that I dealt with. When I was in the program and as I begun to get freer and freer, um, I would, like, when I was in crowds of people or I was in front of men or, you know, we went to Walmart, I would start getting panic attacks, y'all. Like, I would start breathing heavy, thinking that I was that I was gonna have a heart attack. Like I couldn't take it, I would start to cry. And the lies of the enemy said to me, there's something wrong with you. You will never be normal again. Because you've done drugs, this will always be your portion. Y'all, the enemy had me so bound in my mind. Y'all, it's a miracle. <laughs> it's a miracle. And so I battled this. I'd wake up in the middle of the night, like screaming and and like, I'd run to my leader's dorms and say, I need to go to the hospital. Like, I'm, I'm dying. I, 
I was so bound in fear. I was so bound with this mental torment. So there was this one night we had, we'd go to church all the time. They kept us in church. They kept us going to service, services and services for revival. I went to this um, place. It was actually Goldana where that pastor, Be Boogie Bedgood was pastor. Well, there was a prophet guy there and he, he, he was there and um, they were doing ministry. And this is really the first time that I really saw like major deliverance ministry. And this man of God came to me. He says, God is about to deliver you tonight. There's layers, you guys, in deliverance ministry. There's layers. And if you, you might say that, I, you know, I've been delivered, but I still feel that something inside of me. Y'all, don't feel dirty. Don't feel ashamed. Don't feel dirty. Continue to read your word. Continue to dig into the Lord. And if you need deliverance, there's outlets there. I can get you hooked up with that. You know, me and my husband do that. But um, anyway, so I went to this service and this man says, God is about to deliver you from a spirit of religion, a spirit of rejection, a spirit of fear. And he began to name these things. He said, he said I'm going to lay my hands on you. And these things are going to come out. This man of God laid his hands on me. The power of the Holy Ghost began to come on me. My body began to go into convulsions. I was contorting and, and like, I'm like, oh my God, what's wrong with me? Something's wrong with me. And all of a sudden it's, they said, it's okay. It's okay, daughter. These things are coming out tonight. These things are going to be released tonight. And so I'm on the floor and I had these women. They were grabbing my hair doing this and like wiping my hair down. And I just felt so loved and so cared for. And all of a sudden, I felt it in the pit of my stomach. Literally, it was pulled up out through my throat and it came out and I began to throw up. And let me tell you, these demons that had me in a chokehold begin to come out of me. And I screamed, Jesus! And then I was set free from these demons that had me so bound. Y'all, freedom through Jesus Christ is real. You might say, I'm bound. I love Jesus. I go to church. And, but you, you're still tormented in your mind. You're still tormented at night. You still walk with anger. You still walk with depression. Y'all, let me tell you, there is more to God than going to church. There's more to God than just loving Jesus. God has more for you. God is saying, I want to step in and do a deep work in you. I want to deliver you from the anger, from the depression, from the fear, from the things that have bound you. God is saying, let me in. Be willing to put God out of his box. Take God out of the box that you put him in. Y'all, I was raised where I, we didn't see that kind of stuff in church. It wasn't until I was hooked on drugs and in addiction and God ripped me out of darkness that I realized that deliverance from demonic things was actually something that could happen. It was me. God was delivering me. He set me free from demonic stuff. And God will set you free as well. Will you open your eyes to see it? Y'all listen, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray over you tonight. And God is going to deliver you. Stay on till the end because I'm going to pray that right now. If you're facing anything, you're facing depression, fear, anxiety, you got infirmity in your body. I believe that through the airwaves tonight that God is going to bring deliverance to you, that those demons cannot stay, that when you begin to break ties with a demonic realm, when you literally break these contracts with Satan, God is going to set you free. God, we can love Jesus all day. We can go to church all day, but we can be bound because we are literally listening to lies and believing lies of the enemy. It is that simple. When we're bound in fear, that's the demonic activity in our life. God says, this is not your portion, daughter. I have more for you. I have the fullness. I have so the Holy Spirit has so much more for you. You're called to live in the overflow. You're called to live with Father God's Son, the Son of God, which is Jesus and Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what you need. The rivers of living water is what you need to make you alive, to as you get to become 
delivered from these things. You're gonna, you're gonna have a joy in you that you never had. You're gonna have a peace in you that you never had. You're not gonna be able to go up and down in your Christianity anymore. That's not gonna be something that's that's gonna happen again because when you get freedom from these things, you get on fire. You're fire with the word of God. That doesn't burn out. Y'all listen to me. If you know my story, if you've seen me 11 years ago in that place till now, my faith has never wavered. Y'all, I've had faith in the Lord. Yes, I've been through trials, trials and tribulations, but nobody can take the, the my story away from me. Nobody can take the story that when I was in my drug addiction and I was in the deepest place in darkness, I know that that's not that far removed from me. Y'all, nobody can, nobody can tell me that the blood of Jesus isn't real. Guys, I can't make this stuff up. And let me just tell you, this is always on my mind every time I wake up. In the morning, I thank God for the breath in my lungs. I thank God for the breath that he gave me, that Ruach that continues to breathe me back to life. Y'all, the Lord has delivered me from so much and he can deliver you too. Y'all, he is amazing. He is, he's a God that sees all and knows all. Don't give up praying for your loved ones. Don't give up. If yet you are in addiction, if you're just starting out, or if you've been on the journey for a while and you've picked up something back and you said, I shouldn't have picked this back up. Let that shame go. Let that guilt go and get back in the presence of the almighty. Y'all get back into the throne room. Begin to ask Holy Spirit to come in into your life and begin to do a work in you guys. Y'all, it's so awesome. And let me tell you, when the Lord began to deliver me, I began to trust him. I began to see him. Y'all, he began to show me visions of who he is. Y'all, I remember the first thing that I saw when, when he, the first vision that I saw, let me just explain this. We were in, we were in um, prayer time in the morning and I was kneeling down and, and I was getting freer and freer. So when you get freer and freer, you begin to trust the God that has set you free. At first, all I thought, growing up, I thought God was literally black ink on white paid paper, the Bible. All I saw God was a distant God. I didn't know that he was a daddy. I didn't know that he was an, he was like, like, like someone, a father that would want me to come rest in his arms. I had no idea that this is, this, this was the God that created me. I had no idea. If you don't have relationships with, with the father like that, that's why you can you run away and you come back. You run away and come back. That's why, because you don't have that relationship with the Lord. God is saying, I want relationship with you like that. The father says, this is your first assignment to be loved by the father, for the, for the father to show you a love that you never had before. And literally, I had to ask the Holy Spirit, show me how to accept your love because I, I didn't love myself. And when, see, I'm the person that, I didn't love myself, so I didn't like anybody around me, okay? I was the person that was negative. I was that person that if you wanted to tear somebody down, I'll be your partner in crime and we'll rip them to shreds with our words. I was that negative Nancy. I was that person that just didn't have anything nice to say, you know? Um, if it was sunshine, and I would say, oh, you know, it's going to rain today. It's cloudy. That's how I was. So God had to do a deep work in me. But let me get back to that vision that I saw. So I was sitting, kneeling down on my knees, and I was in prayer time, and so I began to trust the Lord, and I said, God, I want to see you deeper. I want to know you deeper. I, and so all of a sudden, I began to see a picture of the Father's feet. I saw his feet, and when he began to show me his feet, I began to weep before the Lord. I began to weep before the Lord, because I, it's like I felt this surrender begin to well up in me. Like God says, God said, you can, you can give me all. You can, you can trust me, daughter. I have you in my hands. I have you. And I'm going to take you to, to places that your mind can't comprehend. I literally had to throw out everything that I know about God. You guys listen, when you've been raised in church, you, it's like you have ideas about God that aren't real. So I literally had to put the things that I knew about God to the fire of his word. I, I said, God, I give you everything that I know about God. I, I, give, I give you everything that I know about you. Now show me what's you and what's not. Literally, he began to unveil my eyes to things that, that I was taught that wasn't true. 
you know, and it just being in the church, that's what happens, you know, but anyway, God began to show me who he was, and then I begin, y'all, when you begin to hunger for God, and when God begins to free you, you begin to want and desire Jesus more, so let me just tell you, when I was in Teen Challenge, we had to wake up at six o'clock, y'all, we had to wake up at six o'clock before the sun woke up, and we begin, we had to do this exercise, all women, back, walking back to back, but I told God, I want more of you, he says, I, he says, carve more time, Krista. So guess what? I begin to wake up at 5.30, y'all, before all the girls got up. And so I would go alone with the Father and I would sit before him and I said, God, I'm here. I'm here. I'm your daughter and I'm here. Come in and let me tell you, when I begin to sacrifice my sleep, the Lord begin to move in. God begin to do a quick work in me and begin to literally set me on fire. My deliverance be, it, it's like it's like he began to pull all of it out of me. I begin to become healed from the things of the past, from the relationship issues. I begin to break soul ties. My my healing process become be, begin to become accelerated because I made myself available to make ourselves available um, to the Lord. What happens is he moves in ourselves available. He comes in on the scene. He comes in on the scene and, and begins to do a quick work. Y'all, listen, all God wants is your yes. No matter what you've been through, God is saying, I am no respecter of person. It doesn't matter what household you've come from. It doesn't matter what you've done. God says, come to me. Get into my presence and say, God, I want all of you. I want everything you have for me. And watch and see what he will do in your life. Watch and see the doors that will open for you. Watch and see the people he will connect you with. God will connect you with people to walk alongside you. You were never meant to walk this journey alone, you guys. That is a lie from the pit of hell. People say, oh, you know, you just, you know, just call on Jesus. All you need. Y'all listen, Jesus is the answer, but God created man not to walk alone, but to link arms with one another. This is the body of Christ. We are called to do this thing together. Y'all listen, if you're alone tonight and you need someone to link arms with you, I'm here. There are sisters in Christ that are here that are ready to link arms with you. You are not alone. Don't think because you are in isolation right now that, that you're alone. God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. All you have to do is call on me. I'm here to tell you, no matter what you've been through, God wants to rescue you. A girl that was bound in meth addiction, in alcohol addiction, in depression, in fear. Guys, I was so messed up. They called me schizophrenia. I was literally up and down in my emotions. I had no stability in my life. But when I began begin to dig into the word, when I begin to open my life up and allow the Holy Spirit access, I begin to trust him and I begin to rest in his arms. I begin to call on him literally on the daily. He began to turn my life around. Y'all, that's all he wants is your yes. That means it's time to turn your phone off. It's time to shut off the TV. It's time to wake up 30 minutes earlier before your kids wake up and say, God, I am here. I am here. I'm sick of living this life style any longer. I'm sick of the lukewarmness. I'm sick of living with this depression. I'm sick of living with this food addiction. I'm sick of seeing my children not obey. I'm sick of the torment in my life. I'm sick of my marriage the way it is. If you're sick and tired, get into the word. Get before the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and begin to allow him to bring you back to life. Mark my words. It will happen when I begin to read the word of the Lord. Y'all listen to this. When I began to read the word of the Lord, I didn't understand it, y'all. I, I did not understand it. I began to ask the Holy Spirit, give me understanding. Give me clarity. Y'all, my, my brain was so foggy with meth. It was month, months before I literally could write three word sentences. Y'all, I'm serious. This is how bound I was in my mind. I began to, I thought literally the enemy would lie to me on the daily. You will always be this way. Your mind will always be like this. I literally had to push through. If that is you, do not give up. Push through. Push through. If you need somebody to pray with you, call that person up. Do not give up. Y'all, if I, I wanted to give up so many times, but because I pushed through, I'm here today as an ambassador of the king, pulling people out of hell. Literally a couple of days ago, I 
I spoke to somebody that literally died for three minutes. Death all over this person. Died for three minutes. I begin to pray the spirit of suicide and death off of her. She got delivered. Because I said yes to Jesus 11 years ago, God has allowed me to be a part of his kingdom and pull people out of hell. This is your calling in life. Y'all, you might say, I don't know what my calling is. I don't know what I'm called to do. I don't know what God has me on this earth to do. Begin to seek him. Let me just say this. You are called to carry the gospel. If you were created by the king of kings and lord of lords, what you are, that means God put air in your lungs to tell the world about Jesus. Y'all, this world is dying. It is time to get up and begin to share what God has done in your life. Y'all, Jesus is coming back. It's time to get serious. Y'all, we've got to get out of our own box and begin to allow the Holy Spirit to do a work in us. We have to get out of lukewarm Christianity. If the church is dead that you're at, find somewhere you can go that is alive. Find somewhere that you can get on fire. Y'all listen, God is wanting to speak to you tonight. God is wanting you to go from where you're at to where he's bringing you, but you've got to give him moments. You've got to give him time. Y'all, sometimes we have to restructure our whole calendar for Jesus. God says, surrender your calendar to me and I will show you how to organize it. When I, when I begin to do that, God begin to move in my life. When I I begin to make room and he become my first, that's when things begin to shift in my life. That's when God begins to move and begin to, to deliver me literally from the pit of hell. Y'all, this is real. Y'all, this is so real. But let me get back to what I was saying about God's word. Y'all, this is not just, this is not just a book. It's not just, I'm going to read my daily Devo. The Lord is my shepherd or sound not want. No, 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 no. Y'all listen. This is not just, uh, I'm just going to read one scripture. I got my God today. He's just a key. He's just something on my keychain that I'm just going to, you know, I love him. I visit him on Sunday. That's it. Y'all, y'all, no, no, no. And then you're battling with fear and anxiety and depression for the rest of the week. Y'all, this is not what God has called us to. We're called to live in his river. We're called to declare his name. We're called to flourish in all things. And if if you feel stuck tonight, God is saying, don't allow that lie of the enemy to, to, to rail you any longer, but get into the word. When I begin to ask the Holy Spirit, give me clarity, give me wisdom, give me understanding of this, he begin to make his word so real to me. Y'all, this is God breed. This word right here, if you have any mental illness, this is the cure. If you have depression, this is the cure. God, this is the thing that brought me back to life. His word brought me back to life. Y'all, this is so real. Y'all, my story could go on and on and on. But God has delivered me from addiction. He delivered me from a spirit of, a spirit of depression and anxiety and fear. Y'all, everything. I literally thought that suicide was my only way out 11 years ago. Tonight, 11 years ago, God pulled me out of the pit. I want to read one, one scripture, and I'm going to pray for people. If you're just jumping on and you... You are needing prayer. I'm going to pray. We're going to pray. And those demonic things are going to come out of you. God is going to bring healing to your life tonight. Y'all, this is how God works. Just because it's the internet, just because it's, it's I can't touch you, it's not even about me. It's the power of God working through me. And as I declare a thing, so shall it be. You didn't jump on here for nothing tonight. God is wanting to deliver you and set you free. And I'm going to read this to you. This is the scripture verse the Lord showed me. And a lot of people know this, but I'm going to read it over you tonight. This is Psalms 40, y'all. This is the scripture the Lord, actually my dad gave me when I went into Teen Challenge. He actually wrote this in my, my, my journal, my first journal that I, I brought to Teen Challenge. And this is the word. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm foundation to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God that many will see in fear and then put their trust in the Lord. 
Y'all, this is what's happening. This is what God can do. This is what God will do. He is your deliverer. He is your healer. He is your strong tower. He is your refuge. He is the one that wants to come in in your life and begin to move and shake your foundation to the point. Every demonic thing, every broken place is healed. Everything in your your life becomes in alignment with his will. That's what he desires for us, you guys. God is a good father. I don't know where you're at tonight, but God says, I love you, daughter. I love you, son. It's not too late. It's right on time. Y'all, I'm going to pray for you before we end tonight. All right, you guys, if you know anybody that um, needs prayer, I want you to tag them right now. We're going to pray over you tonight. Oh, thank you, Father. Father God, I come before you. Lord, I thank you for the power of of the cross. I thank you for your blood. I thank you that your power came down, that you sent your your only son to lay his life down. I thank you for the sacrifice, Father God. I thank you when that blood was shed, you thought about us. I thank you for the blood, oh God, that pulled us out of addiction, out of the pit of hell. I thank you for the blood of Jesus that has healed and set so many people free. But God, you see your sons and daughters tonight. I speak and declare over this broadcast. I declare the blood of Jesus over your life tonight. I rebuke every demonic lie of the enemy that has kept you stuck to think that you you are not enough. You are not worthy of life. That you will always be this way. Your marriage will always be bound. Your, Your kids will always run off in drugs. That you will always be this way. I rebuke every demonic lie of the enemy. I command you demons to be mute and I send you to the abyss in the mighty name of Jesus. I break the plan of the enemy off your life, off your marriage, off your kid's life, off your whole entire generation in the mighty name of Jesus. I rebuke every demonic um, spirit of addiction, every demonic spirit of suicide, every demonic spirit of shame, guilt, death in the mighty name of Jesus. I command you to come up and out in the name of Jesus. You cannot have them. They belong to the Lord. Say, I belong to the Lord. I belong to the Lord. Say, my mind belongs to the Lord. Say, Satan, you can't have me no more. I belong to the Lord. Say, God created me to live in abundance. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I thank you right now, God. You hear the cry of your children. Holy Ghost, I ask that your power, God, would go in the cars and in the households. God, wherever your children are at, that your spirit, oh God, would bring, oh God, the very thing that has been lacking. I speak peace over your life. I declare the joy of the Lord over your life. I declare the healing and the breakthrough. I declare financial breakthrough. I speak healing in your marriage. I speak healing over your children. I speak peace over your sleep in the mighty name of Jesus. I come against every demonic mind-binding spirit, every spirit of confusion, every demonic spirit that would try to come and steal our mental capacity. In the name of Jesus, I speak clarity of the Holy Ghost. I speak the blood of Jesus over your mind. You shall think like Christ. Say, I have the mind of Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. I rebuke every mental stronghold that has bound up your sons and daughters. Every lie that fortifies this demonic city. I speak it broken in the name of Jesus. I speak the blood of Jesus to come and wash away all trauma, all guilt, all regret, all regret. Everything the enemy has tried to come and steal from you in the name of Jesus. God has a plan for you. He has a hope for you. He has he has healing for you. He has restoration for you. He has so much more for you than where you're at. Y'all, God is doing something in this earth. It's time to get connected with those who are going with God. There are so many people walking in darkness even in the church. It's time to to realize to, to realize who is connected to God and who is not. It's time to run with people who are running with God. We don't have time to play games anymore. I'm not playing church anymore. I'm ready to do the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
If they don't speak Jesus, you don't need to talk. You don't need to connect with them. Only if you're doing ministry, okay, you guys? But God is wanting you to get connected with the body of Christ, with revival. God is doing a thing on this earth. And y'all, if you're at my core sisters and brothers in Christ, I want to say hello to you. I love you. Y'all, I want to encourage you. Core sisters, core brothers in Christ, if you got a testimony, it's time to share the word of the Lord. Get on live and begin to talk about what God is doing in your life. Y'all, listen, if you... If you are wanting to go deeper and you don't know what the core group is, this is a mentorship that my husband and I and now our children are connected to. You guys, God is doing an awesome thing. Revival is literally hitting the globe. The Lord has allowed Jenny and um, um, Jenny and Stephen Weaver to foster a movement that's happening globally. And y'all listen. Marriages are getting restored. Men and women are getting literally free from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. People, things are breaking off. I'm talking about I'm talking about suicide, fear, abandonment. Men and women are stepping out into their God-given destiny. There's children that's getting delivered and speaking in tongues and laying hands on people and, and literally casting demons out. This is what's happening. If you are interested in, in getting connected to what God is doing, y'all let me know. I will connect you with these mighty, this mighty woman and man of God. Let me just tell you the reason why God's moving through them. Because they said yes. Because they said that the mentorship belongs to the Lord. It's called core group. The core belongs to the Lord. That's why. You know why? Because it's not about them. It's about Jesus. God is doing a work and bringing healing and deliverance because they said it's about Jesus. But if you're interested and you are sick of living that lifestyle where you're in one Sunday at church and you, you live like you, you live like, like in depression all week and you got fear and you just, you don't, you, you just, you don't even know why you even follow Jesus. You want more? Contact me. I want to get you connected. There's men, core men, y'all. They, they are meeting as of February. They're having um, weekly live broadcasts where men are getting delivered. Men are get connecting with other men globally. And let me just say this. The men are rising up. The men are rising up. It's so awesome. And then the women, the women's, the women's group, we do something every night of the week pretty much, okay? Every night of the week we got something in the morning or not night, morning or night, we got stuff going on. Y'all get connected to that. Let me know if you're not connected. God's doing awesome things. There's probably I, I a little over 8,000 women in, in the women's group and I think close to 2,000 or 1,500 with the men and then the, the children. I don't even know how many children. But if you want to know more, guys, y'all, get connected with me and I'll let you know. I know I just went off on that, y'all. This is, the Lord has allowed Landon, my husband and I, to be connected to this mentorship program. And let me just say this. God has done a work in April of 2021. Was it 2021? Yeah, 2021. God connected me and I went to, I went to this core group retreat in April and since then, the Lord told me, I'm going to use this ministry to equip and to train you to birth the thing that's on the inside of you. And since then, literally the Lord has raised my husband and I up underneath this ministry. Um, it's, it's actually, it's, it's amazing. God's, God's raising up so many men and women for, works of, for, for the work of ministry, the carrying the gospel of Jesus Christ across the world. And that's what this is about, you guys. Raising up men and women. But anyway, I jumped on here tonight to tell you about my story. 11, night, 11 years ago, I was crying out to God for help. Smoking meth, literally in addiction, in depression, in fear. I was so bound. But now I'm here to tell you, God has taken a girl who was so bound and now has made me a mouthpiece for Jesus Christ. I'm this little old girl from South Louisiana. It doesn't matter who you are. God is going to use you for his kingdom. Don't you ever forget it. Don't you ever not know that. Don't, don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Don't, don't know that. Don't say, oh, well, look at them. They, they, you know, they, they look like they got it going on and they're, they're rising to the top. Guys, listen, we're not in competition. Y'all, God has us all on specific journeys. We are called to minister to certain people groups. Get on your journey and stay focused in the throne room and God will elevate you. God will do a work in you that only you and him, you and him go on a journey and it doesn't matter. Y'all, he has something for you to do. Don't, don't not know that. God loves you, you guys. And if you're out there in addiction, if you're out there thinking that, not, that nothing can change in life, Jesus Christ is the one that changes everything. I love you guys. God bless y'all. I wanted to come and testify, and I want to encourage you, testify. 
Testify. Testify of God's goodness. You might say, oh, I don't know how to do the Facebook thing. Y'all, just put live. Hit live and say, I got to talk about Jesus. Talk about Jesus. Talk about Jesus everywhere you go. That's all I got to say. I love you guys. Um, I will talk to y'all later. God bless you.